Okay, so we are going to give the floor to the next participant. The, our next participant is Mikan Kupamaki here. Very nice to see you again, Mikan. Um, hello, Patricia. Hello. Uh, very nice indeed. Hello, yeah. Wafa. <laughs> and, and the presentation by Mika is, is, well, it's titled Responding to the Research Question or is trying to respond to the research question. That is, how does digitalization affect the organization of firms, especially of a stockholders relationships? And actually is trying to answer who is driving this digitalization. Uh, very interesting, like is whether the CEO, the CIO or COVID-19. This is something that we have all wondered very much during the last, especially if you were in Spain, if anyone was in Spain, this is something that we have all wondered um, what is going on with us and how, how it was going to be done. And Mika is going to be explaining us how this global shutdown and the lockdown has been affecting, has been influencing and reinforcing digital solutions and how social distancing has been promoting and addressing, uh, well, incor incorporating different transparency of information and different board, yeah, board changes in terms of governance and how technology and digitalization have been affecting into, into that. Okay, so the floor is yours, Mika. Uh, I will make you assign some kind of, you know, like these five, whenever there are like five minutes left. Okay, and then you can organize yourself with that. Okay, so the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, this is basically uh, the presentation or the, the paper uh, I'm uh, preparing is basically picking up an, a LinkedIn joke. Um, so who is driving digitalization, uh, CEO, CIO or COVID-19. Um, but I think uh, like with many jokes, there's some truth to, uh, to it. So um, um, I was interested in the question whether kind of the efforts uh, uh, by management in companies has been uh, more efficient to, to drive a digitalization because it has been rather slow. Adoption has been slow, technologies are there. Or is it that actually we needed this kind of impetus uh, through COVID-19 uh, to uh, drive forward a change which might be sustainable? And then the question is how use of technology is leveraged in times of uh, a forced social distancing can change organization of firms and pave the way towards more transparency and better board governance. So. So I'm responding to one of the research, research questions uh, Wafa put out. How does digitalization affect organization of firms, especially stockholder relationships? I'm looking at digitalization um, from two perspectives uh, as a means uh, to address stockholder relationships. And then secondly, as a means to address board effectiveness, which um, is a, a follow up of, uh, of my uh, PhD. Mm, dissertation. So in the introduction, um, uh, when uh, framing the, the question, um, we lay out questions we want uh, to address in the paper. One is what does the digitalization pertain? Because when you ask people, whether it's in business, it's in science, it's in academia, it's, it appears that everybody has a different uh, explanation for what digitalization actually is. Uh, second is, in which forms does uh, digitalization impact materialize? Mm, uh, leading, uh, leading up from that, uh, I'm uh, taking three perspectives. First is impact of digitalization on physical organization structures. Second is uh, impact on operating organizing principles, and third is effects on organization of information. The second one is, uh, is uh, taking the board proceedings perspective and then organization of information, then the stockholder relationship uh, perspective. Um, the underlying question is that while we went uh, into this um, into this situation, uh, uh, pretty much everybody unexpected, unprepared, uh, and uh, there were very sudden changes brought about um, as temporary fixes. Question is, um, have some of those changes come to stay? Um, and um, if, if you uh, uh, read the news, listen to media, 
uh, you hear that uh, or follow companies, for example, uh, MasterCard has announced that they will review their real estate strategy because they expect that after COVID-19 uh, uh, this year, mainly 50% will return to the office. Um, and after that, they are not sure whether they will need, will need the same, uh, uh, same office space. Similarly, uh, tech companies uh, like Twitter and Facebook have announced that at least 50 people can choose to work from home in the future. Um, while this has initially been a kind of uh, crisis and a forced situation, I argue that this is an opportunity also for companies to speed up the level and scope of digitalization through learning from the pan pandemic measures. And um, uh, there, I think there's an opportunity to, to uh, turn the lagging which we have, have been observing uh, for the past years into something uh, more proactive. Good, theoretical background. <clears throat> First task is to understand the multiple meanings um, or, and differentiations referring to digitalization uh, by uh, identifying definitions. Uh, and uh, mm, um, working through um, um, uh, papers and, and, and views, there are three perspectives with, uh, which emerge. The simplest one is Brennan Kreis. Uh, differentiating between digitization and digitalization. So digitizing is basically transferring something from the analog domain into the di digital domain. That means rendering a analog re uh, recording digital or taking a um, piece of paper with some information and uh, making a Word document, for example. Second one goes a little bit Deeper. It's a digitalization as described by Hess, Gray, uh, Gray and Rumpe, Biedl and Merz and Wiener from different perspective, uh, perspectives. It typically involves use of software tools and IT, um, processing uh, um, uh, and automation. But then there are also critical voices who say, yeah, digitalization is actually not something something new, it's still the same information management we have seen in the past. Um, and there are also others which say, yeah, we need to assess the delta between information management and digitalization to be able to say whether it's something that is really new and, uh, and, and a change to what has been before. Third level, which goes the deepest, is digital uh, um, transformation described, for example, uh, by Bloomberg. Um, is referring to the process of rendering entire work steps operable in the digital domain or refining uh, operations of an organization into digitally exe executable processes. Um, this could be, uh, for example, um, handling mail, paper mail in, in the, in the um, post uh, uh, department uh, of a company to only accepting digital invoices and uh, digital mail and so on. Um, and uh, also what is interesting in this context, while digitalization is pretty much seen as a business topic, it has wide, widespread uh, uh, impact affecting private life and business alike. Uh, going on, uh, adding uh, more uh, perspectives um, as we discussed in the, uh, uh, related to the introduction. Uh, there has been slow progress on digitalization over the past 10 years. The tools have been there, but they have not been very widely adopted. So we see now lots of things have been adopted. So we looked at, uh, I looked at different perspectives where this has happened. First is business operations. So there has been discussion of digitalization as a bearer of effectiveness and efficiency um, digital innovations, organizational agility, creating new business ecosystems and organizational structures. Um, but the change has not been homogeneous. Uh, there, there's uh, wide variations across industries and occupations. Um, and then uh, there are also, again, critical voices arguing that uh, 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 focusing too much on digital might lead to overcomplication of analysis and over-reliance uh, um, uh, on data. 
Um, engagement, uh, I looked at uh, from perspective of, uh, um, of education. So similar as described while Wissema already in 2009 described a digital university, we have seen it come to life uh, during 2019, 2020, uh, during the COVID-19 lockdowns, and we are experiencing it here right now. And um, the impact on, uh, on education is, uh, is, uh, is significant. Um, it's forced, but it's not uh, only unpleasant. I was, for example, giving a lecture at a university uh, in Germany on um, uh, Tuesday, and then I asked the students, so how do they perceive it? And they said, yeah, I'm perfectly fine not getting up at seven o'clock to be at the uni at uh, 8.15 but to get up at eight o'clock and then get in front of my computer. And, um, and then there are also different, um, different formats emerging like uh, learning management system, systems, um, video, uh, video conferencing like we are doing here or um, larger online events and, and the like. Uh, ad additional perspectives on the, on the theory uh, organizing. So while, um, Digitalization is a global trend happening uh, from different perspectives in different different markets. Here an example from the US. Um, a study done in the U uh, U uh, United States indicates that about 59% of workers in the US are already employed in highly or moderate, moderately digitized, uh, digitalized jobs. Mm, but uh, again, we see the same the same difficulty, uneven distribution um, across genders, races, uh, geographies. Um, then the question is how will we bring uh, it together? What is the smallest common denominator? If you look at companies and, and digital strategies, another sur uh, survey in Germany of um, uh, account controlling functions or accounting functions of companies indicates that only 50% have a digitalization strategy at all. Out of those, only 6% have a mature digitalization strategy. Um, we talk, uh, talked about um, communication and impact of digitalization on communication and the benefits it brings, uh, instant access, sharing from multiple uh, locations, broadcasting, like we hear broadcasting one presentation into 68 locations. But there's also some restrictions we need to be mindful about, social re restrictions, who can access where, additional technical uh, requirements and, and so on. In terms of stockholder um, engagement, interesting is while digitalization makes uh, communication faster, it also shortens the lead times for reacting. So we are seeing that, um, that uh, in case of uh, events, um, companies need to act very fast. For example, this week uh, on Monday, I think they confirmed at German Wirecard that they're missing um, a, a tiny amount of money, 1.9 billion. Two days later, uh, the, the CEO was out. In former times, did, uh, this would have ta uh, taken much longer, uh, longer to materialize. Stockholders are much better informed, much quicker informed. Also uh, social media. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to interrupt, only one more minute. Oh, only one, one more minute. Yeah. So I'm talking too much. Um, so, Social media is uh, increasing uh, interaction. In terms of board organizing, um, uh, also ability to share, organizing uh, board uh, meetings virtually um, have an impact and change proceedings. Now I need to maybe jump to the, I skip over the research and jump to the conclusions or the, the discussion and conclusions. So in terms of stakeholder relationships, um, these are three different definitions of digitalization we had in the beginning. We see all of them impacting uh, stakeholder relationships through relevant information being shared and stored in more ways, distributed through more, uh, through more channels and dis disseminated by more sources. 
but also as uh, as indicated stakeholder expecta uh, expectations are increasing um, in terms of board effectiveness also this uh, all three perspectives have uh, in, uh, impact we have seen a change in uh, changes uh, to business priorities when companies are suffering and uh, the survival is at stake. Secondly, we have seen changes in uh, board operations, uh, uh, approval of only written information, uh, remote meet, uh, uh, board meetings, um, and uh, uh, allowing to avoid uh, presence. Also, uh, several big corporations have held um, um, virtual uh, um, uh, shareholder meetings during this year. Uh, recapping the discussion, it has been shown that digitalization has been considered a factor in management research uh, over the uh, um, research period, which was 2010 to 2020. COVID-19 has indeed shown to be a contributor to these changes in stakeholder uh, uh, relations, as well as board performance and e uh, effectiveness. I argue that the changes wrote about uh, in companies through the pand pandemic, especially the speed of uh, implementation and the profound impact created through the crisis, are unlikely to have materialized to the same extent through management efforts only. So conclusion, last slide, Patricia. Um, effects have been, uh, have been shown. Mm, there's new requirements uh, introduced, um, uh, which have, uh, uh, increase the speed of digitalization um, and um, the, the, the most significant in impact is the speed of change because the change came, it came very subtle, sudden. While most of these adjustments have been devised as uh, temporary me measures, um, uh, lots of them might, be, uh, ha met, might have come to stay uh, longer. We observe changes in physical work structures, in operational procedures and in organization. Uh, of information. Uh, the second paper okay. is uh, who is driving digitalization? So the CEO, the CIO, or the COVID-19? And uh, I would like to thank Mika for his clear and interesting presentation. My question is, uh, being driven by the COVID-19 would be for the long run. In other words, are we going to a new uh, normal situation or this will be only temporary and we'll go back? And if we we'll go back, what are, let's say, the new, the new practices that we will adopt and those that we are adopting already during this uh, lockdown situation and social distancing and maybe that we will not continue having them uh, f uh, following the COVID period? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the, uh, for the question. Uh, I think um, that uh, uh, what has been implemented in terms of tools and uh, processes, procedures, very few of, uh, of those things are new. They have been already there. There are startups of uh, more than a thousand people uh, who have been working with uh, together with each other for years and have never seen each other. It works perfectly fine. Uh, I think um, mm, uh, it is more a cultural change than it is actually a technical change. I think it's the culture and the habits preventing from using those uh, technologies and uh, uh, gaining more uh, effectiveness. Um, I think, yes, some measures will, will go back, but I don't uh, think uh, fully for everyone. And um, there are interesting statements, for example, from Sir Martin Sorrell, who is running, used to run the biggest, now, now is running just a very big, um, big uh, advertising company. He said in an interview, um, during this, this first lockdown, uh, I've been thinking, I'm paying 30 million in office rents per year. I would much rather spend that uh, money on my people than on paying rent. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, to summarize, um, I hope I answer your, your question properly. I think um, uh, this forced lockdown has brought about some insights uh, which were uh, not there before. Uh, they could have been made without uh, COVID-19, but it has been acting as a kind of a accelerator and multiplicator for the change. Okay, yes. And uh, 
uh, my second equation, uh, equation maybe in, in this respect, uh, um, do you think this will be a, a globally, something that is globally, and this will increase maybe the possibility of having, let's say, more, let's say, uh, foreign um, uh, directors in, in companies. Uh, do you think that we will have more foreign directors due to the fact that now if we will have these boards that will meet virtually, so there is no reason, or let's say, less constraints and um, uh, directors from the other parts of the world. So maybe we'll see some changes on this respect or not. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, I would. Um, uh, uh, um, I think it's possible that uh, that happens. So we might see a new definition for global workforce. Mm, just looking back in my own history, I was working for Nokia Corporation for 12 years, traveled a lot. I was sent uh, as a Finnish national to Asia, to US, to Africa, several parts in in, in Europe. The question is, is that effective? And is that the model for the future? So if we accept uh, that we can, uh, can and will and should connect digitally, I think it's more likely that we will also affect, affect that the people working in a place actually come from that place. And I think uh, mm -hmm. it might be better for, uh, for the people, it might be better for the work results, and it might lead to that we then also need to have directors representing those uh, those areas rather just one place where the the company is headquartered